Well, first, Ukrainian police invaded Independence Square in the capital, Kiev, and then they retreated after American and European diplomats expressed outrage at the use of force against peaceful protests there. Ukraine's president has offered to meet his opponents, but he has still not given them what they want, which is his resignation and a free trade agreement with Europe. Tonight, the protests in Kiev are continuing. America's Assistant Secretary of State even visited the square herself to give out small amounts of bread. Our foreign affairs correspondent, Jonathan Rugman, reports. Early this morning, riot police moved in to clear protesters and their tents from Independence Square. This reenactment of a Cold War standoff turning even colder still. For a while, Kiev's tent city stood firm in the snow, men in builders' hats holding their ground. The heavyweight boxing champion, Vitaly Klitschko, demanding the president resign before the protest ends. But after 1 a.m., sheer force of police numbers broke through. When protesters resisted arrest, police used their truncheons, all this making a mockery of Ukraine's promises to Western diplomats that force would not be used. And there were scuffles on the ice when police reinforcements attempted to move. America's Secretary of State used the word disgust in response. Ukraine's tug of war between East and West apparently sliding Moscow's way. Catherine Ashton, the EU's most senior diplomat, had spent over three hours with President Yanukovych yesterday. He now wants 20 billion euros of financial aid to sweeten any trade deal with Europe. And when he didn't get what he wanted, the obstacles to his presidency were physically removed last night. Until that is, the Americans weighed in. This was Victoria Newland's frosty handshake today. Same room, same issue. The Assistant Secretary of State trying to release Yanukovych from Moscow's grip. Earlier, she had taken the cameras with her in an extraordinary act of public diplomacy, handing out bread to protesters. We're here from America. Would you like some bread? Thumbing her nose at the president and his Russian backers, but also doling out crusty loaves to bemused riot police. When police tried to take back Kiev's city hall, protesters hosed them down. Go to Russia, they shouted. And the police vans then reversed in a dramatic change of heart. Their riot shields redistributed by a member of the crowd. Tonight, the police have also withdrawn from Independence Square. The crowds there even bigger than they were before. With the eyes of the world now upon him, Ukraine's president claims he wants talks and compromise. I'm calling on the opposition not to go along the path of standoffs and ultimatums. I'm assuring you that the authorities will only act within the framework of the law and will never use force against peaceful gatherings. The most likely scenario that we see going forward is really a bit of a muddle. Um, it would be extremely difficult for Yanukovych to throw his lot completely with Russia, and it's almost impossible to go entirely back to the European Union. So he's going to have to play this very uncomfortable juggling routine, where he perha perhaps keeps the European Union a bit lukewarm, cozies up to Russia and gives them the policy victory that they want out of this, and then really plays a balancing game of the ends against the middle. The protesters are building barricades with snow now, and they seem in no mood to retreat. Unlikely, too, that the president will resign. But behind the scenes, there is now a search for a deal to end this crisis, which will mean something which keeps these Ukrainians' hopes of a closer relationship with Europe alive. Jonathan Rugman reporting, and in the last few minutes, the US State Department has said it's now considering all policy options towards Ukraine, including sanctions.